Well, he is at the forefront of multiple congressional hearings and demands by Democrats for public transparency of the special counsel report, as well as giving lawmakers more power to put a check on presidential pardons. Joining us now, Congressman Adam Schiff, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Welcome back, sir. Thank you. On uh, Friday, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham blocked a Senate resolution for the special counsel report to be made public, and President Trump insisted that there should be no report at all, uh, calling the investigation illegal. Um, what are you seeking to do on the House side? I think it's very important that the entire Mueller report be made public uh, and that the evidence that underlies the report be shared with Congress. Uh, this is too big to be swept under the rug. And uh, I was, you know, frankly, very pleased to see in the House a vote of 420 to zero uh, to make it public. Um, it was a, a real shame that the senator held that up, but that's not going to prevent that report from being public. Uh, the American people have a right to see it. Uh, and particularly if there's evidence that the president or those around him are compromised uh, by a foreign power, uh, it's important that that be exposed. And right now, uh, Attorney General William Barr controls much of Mueller's findings and how they're going to be released. But couldn't this information be leaked or even read to the public by a member of Congress? Well, at this point, the Congress doesn't have it. Um, but I, I think that, you know, the best case here is really for the Attorney General to live up to what he said during his confirmation hearing. Uh, he promised to make as much of that r report uh, uh, public and transparent, uh, consistent with policy. Well, that means the whole thing, because he has the discretion to release the whole thing, and he should. Um, but, uh, you know, we will, if necessary, subpoena the report. We'll subpoena the underlying evidence. We'll bring Bob Mueller in to testify. But at the end of the day, the American people are going to find out uh, just what happened. Uh, and I think it's essential to the country's security if there are, are things in that report that uh, cause us to believe that uh, our president is somehow beholden to Russia or Putin for financial or other reasons, uh, that needs to be exposed. The, uh, the president has the power of the pardon. You've introduced legislation to prevent abuses of presidential pardons. Um, is there some suggestion that the president would issue pardons for folks who've been convicted? Well, he certainly dangled pardons, I think, quite publicly, and we're looking into whether he dangled pardons privately. Um, when he makes these comments attacking those who cooperate with investigators, but praising people like Manafort, uh, who lied repeatedly to the FBI and the special counsel's office and showed very little or no repentance, uh, and says, I'm not going to take a pardon off the table. He's basically saying, if you stick with Team Trump, if you refuse to cooperate, I've got your back. And in order to discourage that kind of abuse, I uh, introduced a bill that said if the president does grant any pardon in a case in which the president or family member is a witness, a subject, or a target, that the complete investigative files need to be provided to Congress. Let's talk about the U.S.-Mexico border. A.G. Barr fully supporting President Trump's uh, veto of the Senate's resolution to block his national emergency declaration at the U.S.-Mexico border. What is your take on all of this, and specifically the 12 Republican senators who broke party lines and voted for the resolution? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that there was at least some, not only independence uh, in the Senate, but devotion among that dozen group of Republicans to the Constitution, uh, which gives the power of the purse to the Congress. Uh, this is, a, I think, a plainly unconstitutional act. Congress deliberated, voted against uh, building a wall, uh, approved funding for other border security instead. The president himself said that he didn't need to do this. You can't make a weaker case for an emergency than this. And if a president could declare an emergency every time they don't get what they want, we'll be in a constant state of emergency. And what I would say to my conservative friends is, they might like this because they like the idea of a border wall, but how will they feel about a Democratic president declaring a, an emergency on gun violence uh, and taking steps or declaring an emergency on, the, uh, on climate change? I don't think that a lot of the conservatives would like to see that, um, but if they open the door to this kind of abuse, then uh, there's no telling what future presidents might do with it. You recently had uh, Michael Cohen testifying before the House Intelligence Committee and, and others. Uh, that investigation is ongoing. What, if anything, can you tell us about that testimony? Uh, he spent two days testifying before our committee um, and provided a lot of information and a lot of very important leads in terms of corroboration. And obviously, when you have someone who's committed uh, uh, false statements before our committee in the past, you need to corroborate what they say. And so he provided a number of documents that help corroborate his testimony, but also pointed us to other witnesses that we are going to now uh, to bring before our committee other documents we need to get 
uh, to look at the issue uh, both of the building of this Trump Tower in Moscow as well as uh, potential obstruction of justice. And on the Trump Tower Moscow, I think it's very important for people to realize that while Donald Trump was running for president, he was negotiating with the Kremlin uh, to build what would have been the most lucrative uh, deal of his life, a, a tower that would be the tallest, not just in Russia, but in all of Europe. Uh, and the fact that he was publicly espousing a new relationship with Russia while privately trying to get Putin's help uh, is just the kind of compromise that needs to be exposed. And uh, tell us about the rim of the the Quarter Preser Preservation Act that you recently introduced with uh, Senators Diane Feinstein and Kamala Harris. This has been the product of now over a decade of work. Uh, I introduced a bill originally to study expanding the Santa Monica Mountains Recreation Area to uh, preserve that, uh, that environment uh, for future generations. We got that passed, we got the study done, and the recommendation was to double the size of the park. So we have introduced a bill now to make that so. Uh, it's got bipartisan support, uh, at least it has in the past, and we hope will in the present. Uh, and we hope to show the foresight that uh, other generations did in preserving these hillsides uh, for those bears and others that you just showed, uh, um, mountain lions and other uh, wonderful uh, wildlife uh, all around us. All right, Chairman Schiff, thanks very much for coming.